This is a walkthrough of one of the ways to download someone else's family tree on Ancestry. You can't download a tree that you don't own to a JetCom file, but there are ways to get some of the information into a spreadsheet on your local drive. In this video, I'm going to look at one of the five ways that I've listed here, and the one I'm going to look at is copying the lists of people to a spreadsheet. Details are in the article, but this is a walkthrough by video. So I'm just going to switch over now to a family tree. In any public family tree, go up to the tree search menu up here at the top right, expand that, and choose list of all people. Click that. And this gives you an alphabetical list of every single person in the tree with their birth dates, locations, death dates and locations. Any entry that doesn't actually have a surname will appear at the top and then we get into the A's, the B's, etc. When I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I will tell you that there are a maximum of 100 entries per page. It doesn't go up further than that. And then this particular tree has six pages. So I'm going to start with the first page. I'm going to go back up to the top. And I'm just going to show you the easiest way to copy all this information and get it into a spreadsheet that's nicely formatted. You don't want to copy these boxes or these buttons here. So put your cursor just above the name and click and hold. And then you're holding and scrolling down to the end. And then I don't want all those page details or the footer. So I stopped just with name, birth and death highlighted. I then release the cursor, I right click and I choose copy. You can also use control C. By using copy or control C, this data is now in your clipboard. I'm switching over now to a blank spreadsheet. I'm using Microsoft Excel. The next step isn't necessary, it's just it'll be easier for you to see what's happening. I'm just going to expand the width of the cells. You don't need to do this at this point, but it's just purely for the tutorial. What you do now is put your cursor or click into the first cell, A1. Then right click and you're going to paste what you've got in your clipboard. But you're not going to take the usual option. You're going to choose a different paste option. The, the standard option would be this first one, which keeps the source formatting. It does retain links to the profile. I don't particularly want that. I'm going to choose the next one, which is match the destination formatting, which strips out the links. That's my preference. You may prefer to have the links in there. But the latest version of Excel does, I haven't clicked paste here, but Excel is showing me is what it's going to look like if I did choose paste. So I'm going to choose match destination formatting, and now I have the details. As you can see, this needs a bit of tidying up, and I would also like to split some of the de details into different columns. For example, I've got you know, Brady Bridget. I'd like the last name and the first name to be in two different columns. And Excel gives you a number of built-in functions that makes this quite easy to do. So just follow along with me as I clean up this spreadsheet and get it nicely formatted. I'm just going to check down the bottom to make sure I sometimes I copy too much and the footer comes in, but I haven't done that. What I do have for some reason is two lines, name, birth, death. So I just get rid of one of those. This becomes my header. I'm just going to bold that and I will set it to a frozen top row. So to split, for example, Andrew's comma Sheila into Andrew's here and a new column with Sheila in it, I need to give myself an extra column. If I ran the split without doing that, it would just overwrite column B and I'd lose what's there. I'm giving myself an extra column, so I right click at the top there and just click insert. And this is going to be the, it's eventually it's going to be the first name. And this will be the last name. Okay. Next step is to highlight the entire column you want to split. And then I'm on the data menu already, but if you're on the home menu or if you're on the view menu, just here at the top, click the data menu. And then over here in the data tools, click the text to columns. It's asking you how you're going to split it. 
we're going to split it on a, on a delimiter. So leave it at the default as delimited. And then down here, we have a preview of what the data will look like. And at the moment, it's just looking at the first rows, which don't have a last name. So I'm just going to scroll down a bit just to make it easier to see what it's working on. So down here at the Connollys, and you can see I've got a last name and a first name. Click Next. Uncheck the tab and choose Comma. It may not be obvious from the preview, but because there is a space between the comma and the first name, Excel is going to bring along that leading space into the first name field, which is a bit irritating, but we can simply clean that up afterwards. And then I'm going to click Next. At this point, you can leave it at default to general, and now I'm going to click on Finish. It says there's already data here with that warning blip. Do you want to replace it? It is referring to the last name field. And I do want to replace the last name field with what's it what's in there with you know the, the bit before the comma. So I'm just gonna click OK. And now it's done the split. So if I scroll down, you can see that we have surname and first name. But what you may also see is that we have a there's a leading space there. So I want to get rid of the leading space. So there's one more step to do to do that. I'm going to use a function. There's multiple ways of getting rid of leading and trailing spaces. This is the way that I like to do it. I'm going to give myself a, another new column. I'm going to type the function into the column next to it. So to start a function equals and then the function I'm using is the trim function. Open a bracket and then tell Excel I want to work on the cell next to it. So I'm working on B2. Close bracket. And what that's done is it's removed the space. I'm going to now just copy that function down the entire column. To do that, you see where I've clicked into the cell here. And in the bottom right, there's a little square. I'm going to click on that little square. And as you can see, Excel copies the entire function down. And you can also see that it's preserved the space in the middle of these two names. I now am going to hide the original column. And this is my first name field. Okay. So that's the names cleaned up. The next thing I want to do is separate this first field, which has a date and a location, into two separate fields. Now that isn't as straightforward as the name fields. And the reason is that there's such variation in how the birth and death fields come out. Like some of the fields, they have, they have a single word. They just have the location. They don't have a date. I have some dates where I've put them in as, as you can see, a range there, but I don't have a location. The best dates to work with is where you have a full date and a full location separated by a hyphen. Because if you choose to split that field on a hyphen, those come out quite nicely formatted. The problem is that where there isn't a hyphen, they don't come out properly so it leaves it as a bit of a mess. I'm just going to show you what it looks like because if most of your profiles have a full date and a location, this is the way to go. It's the simplest way to go is to use the split on a hyphen. So I'm just going to give myself an extra column, insert, highlight the entire birth field, data menu, text to columns, keep it as delimited, Click Next. And now we're going to remove the column as the delimiter. We don't have anywhere any option here that says a hyphen, but you can type in your own delimiter. So uncheck the comma, check other. This field only accepts one character, so you can type the hyphen. Click Next. I leave it as general and then click Finish. And as you can see, the, the fields where I do have a full date and a, a location place name. They are nicely separated. I could put this as the birth date and put this as the birth location, but you can also see that there I do have 
profiles where I don't have a date, I only have a location, and I have some profiles where I don't have a location, I only have a date. Now, there are ways to go about this in terms of using conditional logic to say that if this field doesn't have a date in it, then move it over to the right. If it does, then split it, etc. But that's a little bit more complex. It requires macros, etc. If you're actually interested in how to go about it, drop me a comment below and I'll put together a video and possibly put together a sample spreadsheet for download that will show you how to do that. But for now, I'm going to just undo what I did, which is Control Z to undo. There we go. We've got it back to how it was. Right, so that wasn't too onerous, but you may or may not remember, we've only done one of the pages that were available in that family tree. If I toggle back now to the list of all people, which is what we copied, you notice down here it says one of six. So the next step is to click on the next page button and then repeat the process of copying for this page and all the way up to page six. And that works fine on a small-ish tree, but suppose we're working on a different tree, like for example, I'll just switch over to a different one. Okay, and this is a different tree. If I scroll all the way down, 29 pages, it's a much bigger tree. You're really not going to want to click next on and do that on a manual copy. There are ways around this. There used to be a Chrome extension that would actually do this for you. It would just simulate the clicking of the next and it would download the details. That's gone, I think. There are ways to automate this that are more complex than what I've shown. Again, if you're interested, drop me a comment and I can go into that. But for now, I leave it as what we have now which is one somewhat formatted page from the list of details from that particular tree. Hope that helps and best of luck with your research.